politics now, though. Accusations flying over the use of children in politics. Washington Post published on the web, then retracted, this political cartoon showing Senator Ted Cruz's daughters as trained monkeys. Senator Cruz slamming the paper, saying, quote, the liberal media is desperate. Well, the artist who drew the cartoon firing back on Twitter, saying this, Ted Cruz has put his children in a political ad. Don't start screaming when editorial cartoonists draw them as well. Marco Rubio jumping in, saying, quote, Washington Post cartoon featuring Ted Cruz's children is disgusting. The Post saying the kids are fair game is even worse. And not to be left out, Donald Trump said this. The Washington Post, which is the lobbyist power for not imposing taxes on Amazon, today did a nasty cartoon attacking Ted Cruz's kids. Bad. Here's our political panel today to debate it. David Webb, host of The David Webb Show on Sirius XM Patriot, and Jessica Ehrlich, Democratic strategist, former candidate for Congress. Hi, Gretchen. Okay, hi, great to see you guys. Jessica, let me start with you uh, because I'm thinking back to children who have been in the White House before, I mean, notably right now, the Obama children, and children in the past, whether it's Chelsea Clinton or Amy Carter, et cetera, are they really fair game or are people supposed to lay off? No, in general, I mean, that's sort of one of the unwritten rules of politics is you don't involve people's children. And often kids are in campaign, you know, whether it's an advertisement, a flyer, a commercial, because people like to show their family and, you know, they put their dogs and their kids and their spouses in the photos. Um, so, you know, in that sense, it really is one of those things. People can be cruel and they have been cruel, you know, whether it was to Chelsea or to Amy Carter or to any children that are in the White House, then they just are. Okay, but so, so it's you don't a think different so, story to have it done in a cartoon, which is why the Post retracted it. Well, and I'm thinking about the Bush twins. I mean, they were also young ladies uh, in the White House yes. growing up at the same time. You know, here's the thing, though, David. They were not only made fun of, but they were depicted as monkeys. I mean, let's not forget that Ted Cruz is a minority. He's Hispanic. So what the heck is up with that? Well, I don't think that even plays into it, Gretchen. And I'll say this with a caveat to Ted Cruz. I agree that politicians use their kids in in commercials for their campaigns, but don't put them in policy ads because then, then that lets the people like this cartoonist who frankly did an idiotic thing and the weak excuse from the post editorial page put something out there. This right. should have never gotten well, past the editorial board. They should be ashamed of themselves and their weak excuse doesn't fit. But can you imagine the response if the Obama kids had been portrayed as monkeys and Obama as an organ grinder or Michelle or, uh, Obama as an organ grinder, both are offensive the way they're depicted together. True. And, and this goes to the left's open use of whatever they see in a paper, not people drawing cartoons in their bedroom or on their computer somewhere, okay. but a paper of record. Okay, so you talked about the so-called apology that was put out. This is from Fred Hyatt, the Post editorial page editor. I failed to look at this cartoon before it was published. Hmm. I understand why Anne thought an exception to the policy was warranted in this case, but I do not agree. So Jessica, it's not really an apology, is it? No, I, but I think it is. They did end up retracting it. So, you know, I don't know that they're going to come out and be abjectly sorry, but he said that he didn't agree and clearly stated that he was wrong in not looking at the cartoon. He wouldn't have let it go. I, I mean, it, that's definitely, you know, an error on their part. But I think, you okay. know, it's despicable that this happened, but then for <laughs> Cruz to send out a fundraising email on top of it, I think David's right. I mean, when you're getting the kids involved in policy and then you're getting them involved in fundraising, this is why people like Trump. Trump. They don't get fundraising emails from him that say, like, look at this outrage, okay. give me $35 yeah. well, now. He's, 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 the, he's the anomaly who doesn't need the money, at least not yeah. right now. I want to get this in because there's a new poll of Republican contenders, and it looks to be a happy new year for Donald Trump. He has a solid lead, 39% now, about double the share of uh, Ted Cruz, who's now in a solid second place, 18%. First time Cruz has broken away from the rest of the pack. David, what does this mean to you? Well, this means that we're now getting further down in the campaign and people are starting to move their votes or cast their support. But these are polls. These are smatterings of people around the country, some national, some local, some Republican voters, some uh, just more adults, you know, focused on adults or those that may not vote in either campaign. 
The real, the real issue here is it's name recognition right now. It's who's getting attention in the news, bad or good, until we get to the Fox debate in January. And we see what plays out at the South Carolina Tea Party Convention where candidates will appear okay. and, and then into the, uh, the subsequent caucuses. We won't really know who's leading. Okay, well, we will have to see. Iowa is February 1st, and those two debates, January 14th and 28th on FBN and then Fox News. Uh,